Well, Lowry's half court prayer forced overtime, but the Raptors still fell short. So, assuming Miami and Cleveland win their semifinal series, we could see a matchup between old friends LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. Stephen A., how big of a threat could the Heat be to the Cavs? Well, that depends. I think that if Chris Bosch uh, somehow, some way, miraculously gets on the court, um, I definitely think that they could give them a run for their money, possibly even beat Cleveland. And if they do lose, it would be a seven-game series. Without Chris Bosch, I think Miami could find a way to, two get to, to win two games. But I think Cleveland will win the series in six. Um, I just think that LeBron and the Cavs are too formidable. Kevin Love's playing good basketball right now. Kyrie Irving uh, is getting his rhythm going, and LeBron is LeBron. J.R. Smith and Tristan Thompson have been doing their job. Their depth coming from their bench uh, is, is, is doing its job. Uh, Coach Tyron Liu has done a great job of really inserting a more up-tempo style of play where open shots are being generated uh, for the people that need to get them. And so when you look at it from that perspective, even though the record wouldn't exemplify it because they've had their struggles from time to time, Cleveland is elevating its level of play at the appropriate time. And because of that, it would really come down to how LeBron plays against Miami. At home, no doubt. In Miami, a bit suspect at times. His numbers are there, uh, but his attitude has to be right. LeBron's got to put on that black hat, be willing to be the villain, the pariah, um, and go after it because that's exactly how the Miami Heat may feel about him. You can look at Dwayne Wade hugging him all he wants to. Dwayne Wade's going to come at him when they play against one another. And Pat Riley is going to make sure everybody else on Miami comes right at him. So because of that, it's going to be very, very tough for him in Miami. But I still believe that the greatness of LeBron James can find a way to steal one game in Miami. I think it would probably be a game six in that series, and Cleveland would win in six. I hear you about Bosch, and we're about to, to talk about him in our, our next subject. But mm -hmm. I am really liking what I'm seeing from the Miami Heat, except for two asterisks last night in which they, they almost blew two late leads, Stephen A, and I, I, they just got to fix their inbounds passing execution. I don't know if they need a new inbounds passer. I, I don't know if they just need to work on some late game execution, but last night <laughs> they're up six with 19 seconds left in regulation up six with 19 seconds left and it obviously took a half court bomb a beautiful thing to watch looked like it was in the second it left his hand by Kyle Lowry but it took that to force overtime then in overtime they go bam 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 they're up eight and they hold an eight point lead until a minute and 21 was left in OT they almost blew that it took Dwayne Wade being every bit of Dwayne Wade with the late steal and breakaway basket and free throw to seal that deal and Dwayne sort of made up for some errors that he made on a couple of the inbounds execution passes. And yet, you know what I'm loving about this team? They, they found a new flow here. You've talked about Goran Dragic. You've talked about how he needs to step up. And, and all of a sudden, he's turned into the two guard. He's just a scorer now to me. He's taken more and more shots his last four games. He's taken 15 shots, 17, 17, and last night a season high tying 20 shots and his points have gone up 10 14 and now the last two games 25 and 26 points he's physical he's taking smaller guards into the post he's banging people off and making shots off the glass but he's not really running the show anymore guess who is our man Dwayne Wade mm. is kind of playing the point right. it, it's sort of going through him the way the offense goes through LeBron in Cleveland and it's a beautiful thing to watch. Now, Dwayne didn't have high assists last night, but even in overtime, a lot of times Dragic would just hand the ball to Dwayne and just say, y you do it, make it happen. And Dwayne has been making it happen, getting the ball the right place, and oftentimes just flat out scoring the basketball himself. So I love the flow they've got. White side's white side. He's, he's not a great on his man shot blocker, but, but he roams and blocks shots all over the lane. He's gonna get his double digit rebounds. And all of a sudden, with Joe Johnson making a lot of clutch shots, he made some big fourth quarter shots last night. They're very good. They are a threat as is to Miami, but I'm with you. Maybe a two-game threat. I don't know. Maybe if they just maxed out and had a miraculous series, maybe they could force a game seven at Cleveland, but I don't think they could win it with this group as is. But I, 
it, it, we can talk about Bosch in just a second. I, I love what Dwayne Wade is doing because he's making huge late plays, and they're looking to him to be Dwayne Wade of five years ago, seven, eight, nine years ago. Again, we talked about how he lost 15 pounds. He's just playing at a supreme level. And last night, it was clear to me from the start, Dwayne Wade was the best player on the floor, and Toronto knew it too. Toronto's a nice team with some nice players. We know who they all are. They had a terrific year, but they don't have Dwayne Wade. Miami does, and that's why Miami is going to win this series. And they took, they didn't steal game one, they just flat out took it. They almost gave it back, but they took control. They won game one, and I think they showed you with Dwayne Wade functioning at his, the highest level, they're the best team in this series by far, to me. Mm. Well, listen, when I look at Toronto, Valanchunas has been impressive, particularly early last night. But in the end, I expect Hassan Whiteside to be a difference because I, was, I, I expect him to be somebody who can patrol the middle. Earlier on, Dwayne Casey was getting the ball to Valanchunas, and he was taking advantage of Hassan Whiteside because the word on Hassan Whiteside, and really it's not the word. If you watch him play, it's an, it's an absolute fact. Skip, he is incredible helping out. But when you force him to man up defensively and go head on against a big boy, he can be taken advantage of. You can get him in foul trouble. He goes for a lot of fakes. Plus, he gets a bit emotional and a bit physical. If you get that way with him, he'll play into that and ultimately get himself into foul trouble from time to time. So the way to neutralize Hassan Whiteside is to really attack him with big boys in the post going directly at him. Because if somebody else is guarding you, is guarding the opposing big man, and he's just like a one-man zone, that's when he's at his best. And I don't think that Toronto did a great enough job in the second half of attacking him. What I will say is that the combination or the trio of, of Wade with Dang, with Joe Johnson, they can make some things happen, and Dwayne Wade is obviously the leader of the pack. Uh, he made some spectacular plays down the stretch, got done what, it, what needed to get done, to be quite honest with you, in terms of a strip, turnover, the breakaway layup, et cetera. You look at Dwayne Wade, and you can't say enough about him. But me, Skip, I find myself raving about this kid, Josh Richardson. I mean, I love this kid's game, and he has tremendous promise because he's young, he's got a spring in his step, He's athletic. He can hit perimeter shots. But skips this dude's defense. This kid plays he defense. He gets up in you. And because he's able to do that, that really does a lot more for the Heat than people realize because now you're not asking a Joe Johnson or a Dwayne Wade to do it. They actually get to be a bit lax to some degree because you've got this dude that's an energizer bunny who, by the way, is not that little who can go out there and defend some of the bigger guards or the smaller guards. He's quick afoot to defend the smaller guards. He's got enough size to defend a bigger guard, and he brings it on the defensive end of the floor. Plus, he can hit perimeter shots. So I really, really like what I'm seeing from him. And I think when you look at Toronto and the combination of Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan being their go-to guys, I think the Heat have enough to neutralize those guys and force somebody else to beat them. And I don't think Toronto can pull that off. By the way, to your point about Josh Richardson, you realize down the stretch last night they were taking Dragic out for defensive purposes, and Dragic who's a star in Miami making a lot of money, seemed okay with it. He seemed to be cheerleading from the sideline. So for defensive purposes, the they're going with the kid. Yes, yeah, it's the playoffs. Plus, he got his money. What's the problem? Yeah, plus he made big shots last night like a late three. So he does the offense side and let Josh do the defense. All right. Yeah. Let's stay in Miami, guys, where the NBA 